it's about 25 years ago now since you wrote your first low-fat cookbook, and that book really revolutionized how we understand low-fat food. Prior to that, you only ate low-fat food if you were having a heart attack, had had a heart attack, or were being treated for cancer. What was it that you did that nobody had done previously? Well, I guess I love to cook so much and I love to eat that um, I wanted to do a healthy cookbook that had very interesting recipes that tasted great because nobody's going to eat recipes necessarily because they work for them if they don't taste good. So, so first of all, the recipe has to, had to taste good and then I really wanted people to use the, you know, I really keep using the cookbook so I realized that the ingredients had to come from your local grocery store and the, all the recipes had to be pretty fast and easy to make. And then, then I had a chance that people were going to, to um, you know, actually use the book. But at the, for the first cookbook, the, um, it was following basically Canada's food guide and the uh, guidelines set out by the Cancer Society. Um, but uh, I used a lot at that time, like ethnic recipes yeah. that today, uh, you like hummus, you buy in every supermarket. But 25 years ago, you couldn't find ready-made hummus unless you went to a, a really ethnic grocery store. That's right. And I think prior to that, often healthy cookbooks listed ingredients that were brand names. They were often things you couldn't buy here in Canada. Right. And I, I remember the first thing I noticed about smart cooking was that it had real food in it. Yeah. And the, the um, food was bright too. There were lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. Yeah, I guess what, yeah, one of the, uh, the principles of my cooking was to use really good ingredients. So, you know, I used fresh lemon juice. I didn't use bottled. I used fresh chopped garlic. It was easy, but and it means simple ingredients, but I always use fresh, good, good quality ingredients. And I think since that time, you know, everybody cooks like this on a day-to-day -day basis, not because they have to, but because the food tastes good. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope they do. Or more and more people, because, you know, changing your eating habits is a gradual process, and you make small changes along the way. So, uh, 25 years ago, you couldn't buy 1% milk. You know, you could right. buy 2% yeah. milk, but you couldn't buy 1%. You couldn't buy light uh, sour cream. You couldn't buy light... Uh, Mayonnaise, but now it's easier. You can make those, you know, gradual, gradual changes to cutting out a little bit. What has changed now? I know that you've updated your recipes in the collection, um, like part of that home. What's changed over those 25 years? Well, the uh, number of ingredients and, and foods available in the grocery store is just mushroom. So uh, you can buy fresh herbs. You can. It's really easy to get fresh ginger everywhere. Um, you can buy s some vegetables ready prepared, your spinach washed. Uh, um, you can also buy a lot of probably less healthy choices and a lot more totally prepared foods. And I hope people will cook from scratch. And, and uh, you know, as I say, you can do simple, really good tasting things that don't take a lot of time. But the more um, that has been done to a food, usually the more salt. Um, yeah. or fat that's been added. And, then, and this is something that's relatively new with this book is the uh, um, emphasis on reducing sodium. So I've used uh, salt reduced uh, tomatoes or no salt added stocks, which again you couldn't buy 25 years ago, but now you can. And we also know now that um, it really is important to cut down the sodium in your diet. Uh, 25 years ago, Health Canada or the health organizations didn't say how much sodium you should have. Now there's a number, it's less than 2,300 milligrams. And, and all the nutrition information on the foods that we buy makes it really a lot healthier, to, easier to eat healthier. What about fats? Now I know 25 years ago it was all about polyunsaturated. And monoins, oh no, and um, uh, also saturated, you know, it was the saturated we weren't, and, uh, they were really, and butter was demonized. Yeah, and hydrogenated. Yeah. Yes. We, it was, uh, we didn't want to have the hydrogenated fats, because those are the ones that you can have the trans fats. Yeah. We didn't mention the word trans fats, because yeah. I think they thought that was too much, and it was too complicated to do all that at once. So basically they said cut down total fat, and then they started to say cut down saturated yeah. fat, and then they said, hey, there's some good fat. And uh, you can have the fat in things like uh, fish. Fish oils are really good for you. And the monounsaturated fats that are like an avocado, 
That's okay, as long as you don't have too much. So I noticed your oatmeal cookie recipe has some butter in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> For cookies, it's a little harder to, to make it with a soft margarine. They don't get crisp, yeah. you know, so I put a little butter in I know the other thing is that do you think that you can really change your lifestyle a lot without uh, raising your activity levels? I know that you like to play tennis. Yeah, I love to play tennis and golf and ski. Um, I, it's, it's really important to get some exercise. You know, walking, whatever, it's just going to make you much healthier. Uh, but when it comes to losing weight, you are, you know, you need to eat fewer calories too. Okay, the other thing, Anne, is that you've been well known as a cookbook writer for 25 years now. And we know that other people write good recipes, but they're not necessarily around for 25 years. What do you think, what um, do you have to offer to new authors, what would you tell them to do? Well, I would go with your gut of what you like to cook and you like to eat and you would make every day, let's say for your family, because sometimes there's a tendency, and I, I mean I did the same thing when I was writing for, you know, I wrote for a lot of magazines and newspapers, sometimes you think this sounds really good and this is great, but you'd only make it once. You know, I try to do recipes that you'd want to make over and over. I guess. And I think another thing you did, Anne, you went out and talked to every group <laughs> who did. ever invited I you. Did. I and did. I think that's one thing that authors don't always think about. Is that they think if you write the book, then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, the promotion is, is equally as much as, as writing the book. And I was lucky that I was invited to, to speak. And I think it was because of the health uh, uh, associations that I had maybe, or the, especially, you know, the Cancer side and the Heart and Stroke are wonderful, asking me to speak everywhere, so I owe a lot to them as well. Well, we hope you'll be around for another 25 years, Anne. <laughs> Thanks, and I hope so. I hope this store's here. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's a fabulous store.